Hi guys, Cinematic Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain an American historical survival and drama movie, called Against the Ice, based on the true story recounted in Two Against the Ice by Edgner Mickelson. In 1909, Americans believed that Greenland was split in two, separated by a lake called the Peary Channel. The Americans claimed that half of the separated Greenland belonged to them. However, the Danish state as the owner of Greenland disagreed and argued that Greenland is a single landmass, indicating that it should belong to Denmark entirely. To confirm this, the Danes sent a small group of expedition to investigate the entire land whether there is a lake separating its land as America had previously claimed. Unfortunately, the expedition had to fail after all the members succumbed to the extreme conditions they faced. Early in the movie, Danish explorer Captain Edner Mikkelsen organizes an expedition to Shannon Island, East Greenland, from where he travels to recover the records of the ill-fated Denmark expedition. However, his first attempt is unsuccessful and his crewman, Jørgensen, has to lose his toes to frostbite in the process. That night, Jørgensen's condition starts to improve and they celebrate Christmas Eve. Mikkelsen then says that on the first trek, he discovered a dead Denmark expedition member with a log and a map showing the location of a cairn built by his expedition. Therefore, he wants to go on a second expedition and asks one of his crew to accompany him. Unluckily, the rest of the crew does not want to because they know that the terrain is very dangerous for them. The next morning, an inexperienced engineer named Aver Everson suddenly volunteers himself to accompany Mikkelsen on his second attempt. Mikkelsen initially does not agree because he has no experience at all in exploring, but because he has no other choice, Mikkelsen is forced to go with him after he learns some basics in exploring. At the beginning of the journey, they are faced with an incline which requires them to climb up. Having made it through, they pitch their tents for the night and then read an article about the previous Denmark expedition. It is revealed that they took the automobile to explore the land. On the 26th day, they finally arrive at the place where the previous Denmark explorers have lost their way. Not long after, a blizzard suddenly appears, forcing them to stop their journey. Inside the tent, Everson asks his captain about what happened to the previous explorer. Mikkelsen tells him that he only found the body of his dear friend, Bronland, frozen in a makeshift cave, while the rest have disappeared. The following day, Everson's sledge nearly falls into a ravine after he slips because his sledge is moving too fast. As a result, one of his dogs has to die before he can save it. Not only that, they also lose some of their food and dog food reserves for the next two weeks based on Everson's calculations. However, Mickelson insists that they have to continue their journey. Whenever they take a break, Everson always asks his captain about his work and expeditions he has been on so far. He asks if Mickelson is not thinking of someone special waiting for him at home. Mickelson then emphasizes that he should be free without thinking of his lover in doing his job as an explorer. However, at one night, he dreams that his lover, Naja, is sleeping beside him before continuing the expedition. Later, Everson is forced to sacrifice one of his weak dogs to provide food to the remaining teams. On the 84th day, their food supply is running low, leaving Everson desperate. However, with his captain's optimism, they continue the expedition unyielding. About three months into the expedition, they finally manage to locate the cairn and find some food supplies in a campsite. Mickelson quickly dismantles the cairn, which contains records denying the existence of the Peary Channel, thereby showing that Greenland is a single island and that the Americans have no claim in the Arctic. On the other hand, they must return to their ship to provide evidence of the results of their expedition. On day 132, they encounter another blizzard, causing one of their dogs to die. Everson takes the dog's liver and then cooks it. Unluckily, the liver turns out to be poisonous, which causes them to vomit. They continue their way back with the remaining dogs until they are completely out of food. Soon, Everson attempts to hunt a seal. As he aims the rifle, their dogs suddenly bark for some reason, making the seal run away. After a while, he hears Mickelson's gun fire, sending him running towards his captain. It turns out that Mickelson is being attacked by a polar bear and is trying to fight it off. Therefore, Everson immediately shoots the polar bear from a distance, killing it in the end. However, the dead polar bear falls on Mickelson, causing him to drown in the water with the corpse. Fortunately, Everson manages to save his captain by pulling the sledge rope which tied to his leg earlier. The polar bear had apparently killed their two dogs, so now they only have one dog left. When he wakes from his sleep, Everson finds that their last dog has died. He also learns that their sledge has been burned by Mickelson, who says that they do not need it anymore. The captain decides to continue the journey on foot as they will have to cover 200 miles to get to their ship. On day 164, 
they walk with the remaining provisions on their backs. Meanwhile, the land ice that they once crossed has now melted, creating a fairly large river flow. Because of this, Mickelson fears that they may not survive, so the two build another cairn about 200 miles from Shannon Island, in which they deposit the records from the Denmark expedition. Later, their struggle seems to be paying off, as they see the mast of their ship from a distance. Unfortunately, the ship has destroyed and the rest of the crew have returned home, leaving them stranded in Greenland. Elsewhere, Mickelson's crew are meeting with the ministers. One of them tells the chronology of the ship's destruction due to a storm that forced them to return home with the help of whalers. They have left enough food to last at least for a year. However, the minister seems displeased that they left Captain Mickelson behind, which forces the state to fund another rescue attempt. Moreover, Mickelson was only accompanied by an inexperienced technician whose name was not on the original crew list. In the meantime, Mickelson and Everson are forced to spend their days in a cabin with food and supplies. According to Mickelson's observations, there will be a ship that will pick them up within the next year. That night, he dreams that the cairn is somehow dismantled. Just then, he invites Everson to come back there to take the records. After that, they lock up their cabin door before leaving. Everson also intends to leave a note in case the rescue teams arrive later, but Mickelson says that they do not have to as they will be back here soon. They finally arrive at the cairn they built on the 439th day. It is true that the cairn has dismantled, but luckily the records is still there. On their way home, they accidentally find the automobile from the Denmark expedition. When they arrive at the campsite, they are surprised because the cabin door has opened by someone else. There is a note left by would-be rescuers on the dining table, saying that they had found no sign of their life. Knowing that, Everson speaks words that offended his captain, who was unwilling to leave a note beforehand. Because of that, Mickelson gets very angry and desperately destroys the only sledge they currently have. The scene moves to Jernson, who reports that the rescuers they sent to fetch the captain failed to save them. He firmly believes that Mickelson is still around, but the minister begins to give up because they have spent a lot of money and declares the expedition can no longer continue. Long story short, they have spent three winters in the campsite, which means they have been there for almost three years. They have a hard time getting through the day until Mickelson hallucinates that he sees Naja coming to the campsite in a hot air balloon. From then on, he always imagines Naja beside him, while Everson imagines meeting his grandfather. At one point, Mickelson's hallucinations are getting worse when he thinks that Naja prefers Everson over him. Because of this, he nearly kills Everson with a rifle before Everson calms him down by saying that everything he experienced was not real. He then apologizes to Everson and admits his mistake. Suddenly, a polar bear tries to break into their cabin. They hold the cabin door as hard as they can while screaming to frighten the polar bear, which surprisingly works. Finally on day 865, Jernsen and his men arrive to rescue them both as they have almost lost their sanity. They immediately return home and give the recordings to the minister. With that, the duo has completed their heroic work. On the day the minister announces the results of his expedition, Mickelson is overjoyed after being visited by Naja. Despite all the struggles they went through, their evidence from the Denmark expedition leads to American recognition of Greenland as a single island belonging to Denmark. In an epilogue, it is revealed that Mickelson married Naja a year later, while Everson never set foot in the Arctic again. The two men also remained friends for life. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.